What's up everyone, today we're going to install the Roadtop CIC CarPlay module in this 2011 BMW 750 Li. This is the F2 series, so this is work on F1, F2, F01, F02, you know. So, let's first start on how to install it. So we're going to first start with removing this panel right here. So let's remove this panel here first. So this is a module that basically adapts in between the uh, display and the iDrive system. So, so this works for both CIC and the NBT head units. I'll put a link in the description. This cost me $2.99 on Amazon. You can get it on AliExpress for like $2.39 if you're willing to wait like a month to two months to get it. But I like getting it from Amazon just because, you know, there's free returns if something happens to it. And they also offer like that three-year insurance for like $30 or something. So yeah. Let's take a look at what it comes with inside. So inside you have this booklet with a little card. It's the cable connections. And this is another booklet that basically like tells you more about CarPlay and Android Auto. Then inside we have the unit itself. So it's literally, literally it just connects to your can, uh, your can power. You have your LVDS in and out here. And then on the other side, this is a switch. So we'll go over this when we install it on how to uh, configure this for the car. Then if we open this, we have all of our cables. So yeah, that's a lot of cables. So we'll go over how to do that in a second as well. So on the 7 Series, these are separate pieces. So we're just going to remove this piece right here. And to do that, you're going to get a prying tool. And you're just going to basically gently pry this open like this. And then once you get it out, you're just going to bring it out like that. Be careful because... There is a wire right here that needs to be removed. And then there's a secondary wire that's routed like this. And as you can see, there's a connector here. And there's one more connector right here. And that one's going to be hard to get because it's like... And then just carefully remove these wires out of the way. Okay. Alright, so once you got that out, there's two... T20 screws here that we're going to remove. So I don't have uh, I spent like 30 minutes trying to find this. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. Okay, so we're just going to open this like this. So once you remove these two screws, you're going to remove these. So just stick this in here like this and then remove the both sides. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remove this. So we have these connectors here, and um, basically you push down and just bring it out like that. They're really hard to remove. Same here. You're going to push down and then move this bracket back. So push down, bracket comes back, and then this just comes right out once you get it out. Okay, let's put that aside. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four more screws. And these screws happen to be the same size as the other ones, thank goodness. Okay, I got some little protection here so we don't uh, destroy anything. So I'm just gonna pull this out. Dirty too. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we need to remove some of the wiring here. So let me get a little closer. So we need to remove this interlock cable. Just pull it up and then it just comes right out. Then we should remove these other wires as well. So I'm gonna push this in like this and just remove it. All of these. All right, so before we wire everything on this box, there are these switches here. And in the manual, it tells you which switches to turn on depending on your system. So for the 8.8 .8 and 10.2 inch systems, you need to turn on three and four. So you just put those toggles down, three and four, and that's it. So now, let's go ahead and start doing the wiring. Okay, so the first thing you want to do for the wiring is this little connector right here. So this is the connector for the fiber optics. We need to remove this. So to remove it, you just basically push this up. Um, there's a little clip here. Um, so let me see if I have something that can just... So this is the identical connector. And basically what we're going to do is this piece now needs to plug in to this piece right here like it was in the other connector. So we're just going to push this in like this and that's it, it's connected. So now we need to connect this little thing here to this one. So we're just going to push this in like this and then do this and we'll lock it. And that's it, it's locked. So that's it for this connector. So now this will go back to the CIC unit. 
And then we have all these wires that also need to go back to the CIC unit. So let me just organize this a little bit. Okay, so all this will connect to the CIC except for the LVDS cable, which is this one. So now this cable, okay, so the LVDS out cable from the uh, new system will go into this pink connector here. It just clips right in. And now this one will go into the output of the box, which we'll do in a second here. So LVDS out is this cable that we just connected and that will go here like this. Next, we have, this is the CAN power cable, which will connect right here to the CAN power cable. So we're just gonna connect this. Looks like it goes like this. Now we have this, we have this. The LVDS in will be the other cable, it looks like this. So this one will go in here, like so. And then this part of the cable will connect to the head unit. Next, we have the Wi-Fi antenna. So this one will connect right here like this, and then you can move it around how you want it, and that's it. So we'll see where to place this later. My biggest concern is where to hide this big box inside there, just because this whole thing barely fits. So we'll see how to do that in a second. So now, so this long aux cable that's connected into this harness actually needs to come all the way and connect right here where it says aux in. So we need to get this cable connected to the aux in. So this connector is for the USB slash the cameras. Um, I'm probably not gonna connect this just because this car already has all the cameras, surround view and everything. And we're not gonna use the USB just because we want a nice clean setup. We're gonna use wireless CarPlay. This has wireless CarPlay, so we'll do that. And in the future, I'm gonna implement a wireless charging pad right into this glove box. So again, we're not gonna need to charge our phones with this. So this is more useful for people who want to install other accessories like cameras and stuff, but we're gonna skip this. And I'm pretty sure we can skip this. So, so next we need to remove this piece right here because we need to get the cable. So not only do we need to get the aux cable, but we also need to get this cable to the iDrive uh, controller. So this cable goes to the iDrive controller. Let's tear this open next. Let me show you guys how to tear this open. To remove this, you're just gonna stick one of these and we're just gonna carefully, this side's being a little difficult. There we go, all right. Got that out. We have two Torx bits right here that we need to remove. So now luckily BMW used all of the same uh, screw sizes, this is not too bad. What you're gonna do is you're gonna just go ahead and lift this up very carefully. Uh, as far as I know, there's no other screws. There we go. Okay, got it all out. Now be careful because once you lift this up, there's some wires um, on each side here. So, so we have this connector here, you're gonna basically remove this connector. I'm gonna disconnect all this just to make life much easier. So this right here, pull it out. Uh, this one up here. Okay, so now you're gonna go ahead and just remove this whole piece. This is gonna go here like this. Like that. And then we're just gonna stuff this in here a little bit. But now we have this wire here that we also need to route. So, so now we have this whole uh, area here and um, I should probably remove this just so it's easier to route the wiring. Okay, so there's a screw here and one over there on the uh, sunglass holder. Okay, so once we remove those two screws, now we're just gonna go ahead and remove this power cable right here. Okay, and then this should just, I believe, pop right out. Yep, all right. So now we're gonna route this wire and um, it looks like this wire goes from here. Okay, so that's the wire from the top. So the way I'm gonna do it is, I'm just gonna stick it in like this, and I believe this should work. And then next, the aux cable. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the other cable. And I'm just gonna bring it through here. And then from up here, we're gonna bring it right down here where all these other wires are. So hopefully I can bring it, there we go, I see it. Okay, so just like before, I'm gonna get as much of the wire out as I can. Finally, I need to figure out how to get this into here, so. Okay, so what I did was I grabbed this aux cable and I stuck it under this piece and brought it from the outside on this side and then stuck it in here and then now we just connect it here. I didn't remove this whole piece just because I didn't want to. I don't feel like doing something like that. Um, close is fine. You know, this one is perfectly fine too, so yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the iDrive controller. So this wire right here will go into this connector. So just make sure you do it the right way, which looks like it goes this way. Okay, 
the iDrive is connected. So now we're gonna just reconnect these as well. I'm just gonna make sure all these wires are not in the way of that hole. So now let's connect uh, these wires. So the white one goes here, like that, and then the black one goes back. Okay, this one, um, I'm just gonna shove it into a little hole. There's like a little hole right here. So. We're gonna go ahead and hook up the iDrive system and test everything out before we plug everything back in. Okay, so that's the box right there. I literally just stuffed it in there. I stuffed all the wires on the right side. So now all we have left are the connectors for the iDrive unit. So uh, let's see if that all fits or not because it's pretty cramped in here. I don't think it's gonna fit, but let's see what happens. So your LVDS in will now be the one from this connector. So when you plug it in, make sure you plug the one in from this connector. And then the rest of the wires will all be the same. So I'm just gonna plug everything in and hopefully everything works. All right, so I spent a good probably hour almost trying to figure out where to stuff this box because there's no room in this area at all to stuff it, at least on the 750 Li. So I think I found an area where we're gonna stuff this. So. There is a little area right here that looks like it looks like there's nothing here. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and route all the wires to that area. So all right, so we spent the last I don't know hour and a half trying to figure out where to put the module, and we ended up just doing it off camera because it took too long. But I'm gonna explain to you guys where I put it. So the module box, so right here. So with this removed, obviously. Where we put the module is up here. I literally grabbed it and I stuffed it up here and went back. Like, I didn't remove any extra stuff from the previous scene. I just got the box and stuffed it behind the screen. So basically, that's where we put the module and it fit. And that's the only spot that I could fit it. I tried putting it on this side. I tried putting it on this side. And I tried to put it behind the module. It just would not fit. And that's on the 750. I don't know if the 5 series or the 3 series are different in terms of room back there. But we put it behind here, put it behind the screen. We assembled everything back together. So just, you know, go back, look at the video if you need help on how to put everything back together. You just do it, everything in reverse. But everything's back together. It's working. So here on the iDrive controller, you hold the menu button. And once you hold it, it actually goes back to normal. So if I press, so you can use, you know, everything. I can, I can still use, you know, the cameras, the cameras and everything on the iDrive system. And then if you hold menu again, you come here. So here, you use it just like the other cars, the nearer cars. You use the iDrive controller. It's not touchscreen, obviously, because we didn't change the screen or anything. This is how it looks. Everything is working. And then if you click here where it says BMW, these are the settings. Like These are like the, this is like basically, you know, you have AirPlay. This is the CarPlay. This is wireless Android Auto. That's Android Auto with wire. USB camera. This is for aftermarket cameras. You don't have to worry about that. I want to show you my settings because the audio is definitely not as good as it was before. It's still pretty good, but... So volume I have at 17 and alter volume is at 13. The EQ I have off. I didn't change the EQ. And then these are the other settings I have here. So if you guys want to like copy my settings, this is what I have. And then if we go back to the iDrive system, you know, you have to click CD, multimedia, you need to click aux. I have the volume set here, like it's in the default area. This is the best you can do in my in my opinion for the sound. So, you know, it sounds like a normal aux device. Like it sounds like something you connect to your aux. The only problem with it is it's not as loud, so you have to turn up the volume. So be careful going between this. Anyways, you're gonna click wireless here and then you're gonna connect your device. I already have mine connected, it comes up here. So that's the, you click that and then here you go. CarPlay is here, everything works. Um, sound quality is, like I said, it's not as good as the original. It's as if something's hooked up to the aux, just lower volume, but it still sounds really good. It still takes advantage of everything. And then yeah, everything works. So interestingly, we've actually, uh, this video is actually shot, I think a month and a half after we installed this. So we've had some time with this just to make sure for you guys that everything's good. So far, everything's working great. Wireless uh, CarPlay works great. My next mod for this car that I want to do is I kind of want to install a wireless charger here for the phone. My M6 has a wireless charger. 
Oh yeah, there's an M6. That video is coming uh, after this one. But yeah, we'll go over the M6 later. But yeah, um, I want to install a wireless charger here. I'll see how how that's gonna work. But that would be the next thing. Like I said before earlier in the video, this aux cord has to stay in here because this aux is actually going to the stereo. Um, besides that, it's a great way to modernize any BMW that either has a CIC or NBT system. I'll put a link in the description to both models, and then, you, you know, you guys can check it out. But, yeah, it costs $300. That's, that's not too bad. I mean, you get to keep the OEM system, and everything works, you know. My main concern was, do I still get to see my surround view? Do I still get to access the backup camera? Everything still works perfectly fine. It's as if nothing was changed. So, anyways, like always, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.